Seattle Unity and welcome people at home. We miss you so much. Hello to, uh, I know there's some specific people watching, maybe Brian and Stephanie. Hello. Maybe Elsie. Hello. Faith or both faiths or we also have two roses. Hello. I'm going to encourage you to stand as you are able wherever you are. We'll start with this song. It's very easy. It goes like this. Let the glory of our love rise among us let the glory of our love rise among us let the praises of our god rise among us let it rise let's try that let the glory let the glory of our love rise among us let the glory of our love rise among us let the praises of our
So we turn our attention within as we know the truth of our opening statement together. There is but one presence and one power in my life and in the universe. God the good omnipotence. We'll start this one out a little bit quieter. You can take this moment to let it rise from within you. It's so important right now that tiny mustard seed of energy and let it build up and there's no you don't have to throw your arms over your head your version can be different it's the growth the feeling of allowing it to rise and then we'll allow it to get louder let's just see how that feels for you in the morning one two let the glory of our love rise among us let the glory of our love rise among us let the praises of our God rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of our love rise among us. Let the glory of our love rise among us. Let the praises of our God rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, oh. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Seattle Unity both in house and at home. It's wonderful to see you all. So before I begin, just if you have any prayer requests, please type them into the chat box and or if we're in the room, uh, put them over there in the prayer box and we'll bless you following the service. So let's join together with our mission statement, which is... We are a welcoming spiritual community, thriving in the heart of Seattle, celebrating, inspiring, and deepening our individual and collective spiritual journeys. And it is so. All right. So just three announcements this morning. One is the Seattle Unity Lookbook is out, thanks to Cindy McComish. Let's give her a round of applause. So these are available free online. However, if you would like a, a hard copy, you can purchase those over there, and we ask for a $10 donation. And again, it's just wonderful. It's the first step to sort of coming back together after COVID, right? Seeing each other's faces and things again. Um, our other announcement is that we have a Breeze and Tech tutorial happening over there following the service led by Jen and Karen R. So if you're like, I don't know what this Breeze thing is or if you need some help with that, she, they'd be happy to do that following the service. And then finally, uh, Mariella Roberts' service is next Sunday, May 22nd at Edmonds Park at 2 o'clock. And so you're all invited, and we'd love to have you come and share Mariella's stories. So that said, let's all stand and greet one another and watch announcements at home.
when you're able, make your way back to a place where you can sing and dance with ease and freedom. Hi, Ted. Oh, my God. There's so many people I haven't seen in so long. It's very thrilling. But if you can, I do want you to dance and sing and all of that. But if you can, don't block the cameras because the people at home, although, you know, I love it when I see people, like, kissing right in front of the camera. It makes me very happy. I'm like, oh, hey, people. you in the gym you go to. <laughs> but you can feel your breath moving at this point. As we're settling into this space, we're moving into a more contemplative part of the service. It'll include a reading in a moment and a silent meditation. <sighs> moving out of that place, you'll hear um, some guitar from our special guest. This is his first time here. This is Phineas Yungoro. So I encourage you to get settled in your seats. And uh, Steve Peha, would you come up and give us our reading? Good morning. We have two readings this morning. The first is a poem from Mark Nepo. How do trees deal with injustice? They grow a branch wherever they are cut. And how do sparrows deal with grief? They open their tiny wings and swoop at anything that glistens. So why am I all cut and hungry? Because I do not know the tree that is my soul and refuse the sparrow in my heart. Next reading is taken from the Daily Word for May 18th, 2022. Beautiful. With deep gratitude, I discover a beautiful world. With mindful intention to discover the sacred nature of all things, I find beauty everywhere. 
A breeze caressing trees resembles graceful dancers bending and swaying in unison. Sunlight reflecting off the water dazzles like a million diamonds blazing their brilliance. Even the way my bones and muscles come together to move my body is a marvel. When I see someone engaged in something they love, I witness joy made manifest. They are simply beautiful beyond measure. The awesome magnificence of existence is breathtakingly, overwhelmingly beautiful. As I behold stunning grace and artistry all around me, every fiber of my being sings a song of thanksgiving for the gift of being alive.
Thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me save that Thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, Thy presence, my, 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 my. Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great father and I thy true son. Thou in me dwelling, and I with thee. Thou art, thou my best thought, by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my Thank you, Phineas, and our entire worship arts team. The great energy. So we are in our uh, annual theme of the Tree of Life, and currently we're looking at the trunk of the tree. And today I specifically want to focus on the heartwood, which is that central core in the trunk. And it is surrounded by the sapwood, which is the soft outer part, which allows the nutrients and fluids to move up and down the tree. Um, but I want to focus in on the heartwood. Uh, it is particularly strong and beautiful, and that's why it's the most sought after um, for construction and furniture. And it's this beautiful reflection of our own heart. And so that was the inspiration for uh, the talk title, which is the Resilient Heart. And the heartwood within a tree, within that trunk, is this beautiful bridge between the earth and the cosmos, uh, just as our own beautiful heart is. And so I wanted to dive deeper into this exploration and look at uh, first this word resilience, which is defined as that ability to recover. It means to be strong, supple, and flexible. And we all could use a little resilience, right, in this world with all the changes and the, the experiences that we have. And certainly as a community, we've shown great resilience as we've been moving through construction. And we've been in this temporary space now for, for how long? 
Almost, but not quite, just a little short of that. So it's actually been about three years. And so as a community, we've shown this incredible resilience to come together and maintain community as we go through this transition in the construction of our new building. And this is also reflected individually in our own, as I said, our own individual heart. And the physical heart is this amazing muscle and has this incredible resilience. When you think about it, it's truly awe-inspiring. It beats close to 115,000 times in a day. And in a year, approximately 42 million times. And then in an average lifetime, how many times do you think our heart beats? Take a guess. Exactly, Dirk wins the prize, yes. So in an average lifetime, our beautiful heart beats approximately three billion times. And it pumps in and out and in and out. It's this beautiful recurring flow, and it's amazing. And our energetic and our spiritual heart, our heart chakra, is just as beautiful. And as I said, it's this bridge between the lower three chakras, which are associated with the earth, and the upper three chakras, which are associated with the cosmos or the heavens. And so our heart center is this beautiful bridge between body and spirit, between earth and the heavens or the cosmos. In the same way that the trunk of the tree, the heartwood, is this bridge between the rootedness on the earth and reaching its branches up into the sky. And this resilience that we lean into, um, also that strength, is a, a, one of our 12 powers. And so we don't always talk too much in unity about our 12 powers. Sometimes we bring them in. But I wanted to touch on it this morning because it was so relevant. It is so relevant. Uh, so one of those qualities, those divine qualities that we have at our uh, access is strength. And Reverend Linda Martella Whitsett in her book, Divine Audacity, uh, talks about strength in this way. She says, spiritual strength is our capacity to stand undaunted in the midst of shifting circumstances, to act courageously, and to stay the course. And we have all that we need in terms of strength, like all of the 12 powers, like all of these spiritual capacities. There's no need to go out and get more. It's simply a matter of awakening that which is already within us and calling more of that forward. And we certainly need to call on strength and spiritual strength when we're faced with challenges both large and small. And... If we've been on this planet for any amount of time, we've all had those highs and lows, the joys and the sorrows and the pain. Uh, you have to um, be pretty strong and resilient just to make it on this earth, right? This human journey's not for wimps. <laughs> it is not. And so our great spiritual practice is to be willing and, and open to allowing our hearts to feel all that it needs to feel. And it's interesting because during the painful moments, that becomes even more challenging. And one of my favorite authors, uh, Stephen Levine, in his book, Unattended Sorrow, one of my favorite quotes, he says, uh, what odd creatures we are that when the heart aches most, calling us most directly to its pain, we may be least likely to do so. Our mind is so full we have no refuge in our heart, which during this time would be the only safe harbor, the only safe harbor. And so it's this paradox, right? So we start to have these experiences, these uncomfortable, these difficult feelings of pain or loss or sorrow, whether it's a personal loss or in watching the news, some of the news that we see or hear about. And this place that we are called to go to is our heart and it's often the place that we shy away from. And as Stephen Levine is writing, it is the one safe place that we need to go to. It is that safe harbor that we're called to, that re residence of our heart. 
I had a friend um, one time, and, and she would often talk about when we are experiencing loss, uh, she would say, grieve well. And it was an interesting way of phrasing it, but to grieve well means to grieve fully. And in the busyness of life, sometimes when we uh, have losses and challenges, it's sometimes hard to find that space to allow the grief to fully move through us. We have these phases throughout our life, again, these highs and these lows, uh, these beginning points and stopping points, whether it's in our work and then retirement, in service, in our relationships. And I experience, I'm experiencing this now, um, kind of looking at these different phases. And I'm in the midst of kind of ending several phases, important phases. And so I had started uh, my ministerial path five years ago and started on that program. And so the last five years has been so strongly uh, focused. I've invested so much time in, in that program and then our, our lovely building project. So those have taken so much of my, my focus and my time these past five years. So I've been reflecting quite a bit at this point in time as interestingly, both of those are kind of coinciding to come to conclusion soon. And I've also been reflecting on uh, these past five years because in my first quarter of school, uh, my sister Heather died. And she was my sister, but she was also one of my closest friends. And in the busyness of life, it was important to still find the time to grieve and remember and allow that to process through the heart. And I truly have <laughs> allowed that to move through me. But interestingly, I had um, intended to go spread her ashes the last two years. And then with COVID, it kept getting delayed. And so now, as I am preparing to do that this summer and have that uh, time to bring that kind of phase of our relationship to conclusion, it's starting to touch into these tender spots. You know, and the mind is interesting because it will do things like, well, I finished that already. Like, I should be done with it, or there's a timeline. So it's been five years, so it shouldn't still be coming up, right? So the mind likes to give us those messages, even when our heart knows when we need to stop and pause and listen. And we all know this, but I think we all need the reminder sometimes. And it's not only with, I think, the big losses. I think it's also the smaller ones. And those are almost more sneaky, I think, in a way, because they sometimes accumulate slowly over time without us realizing it. So it might be kind of a loss of energy or loss of mobility as we age. It might be the parting or growing up of our our children and the different phases that we're missing along the way. But we're so busy that sometimes we forget to pause and listen in to our wise, wise heart of what is needed in this moment. You know, all our different specific losses and challenges look a little bit different but there's also a commonality and a thread that moves through them. And I love uh, Mark Napo when he says, it seems the heart of it is to find the flute we each are hiding, carrying, and being carved into. And hearing the music of life pass through our wounds and openings is how facing each other can make every stranger known. And I'd say our joys as well. And again, so often we get focused on our differences, our different ways of seeing, our different ways of being, and we forget our commonality. And that we share so many of the similar challenges and we share so many of the similar joys of life. And so it's important to pause and remember that place where we are common and where we meet together. As I was saying, it's quite common, it's a natural instinct that when we're feeling discomfort or we're feeling pain, uh, while it's the most important place to go to is our heart, heart, 
uh, one way of responding is to actually put up the armor and to try to shield it and protect it. And so the mind will give us this message that we can't handle it, that it's too much. But our wise, resilient heart actually knows better and has this incredible capacity to face whatever life brings us. And it's interesting because the heartwood of a tree in the trunk is similar in the sense that that heartwood is so strong and is, resists decay or fungal um, attack as long as the soft sapwood on the outside remains healthy and supple. And our own heart is similar. If we allow what we feel in our life experiences to move through us rather than blocking it, then it allows our heart to stay flexible and fluid and supple. supple. One of our spiritual principles and unity teachings is that our thoughts and feelings precede manifestation. And this is so true for our hearts because if we, we armor our hearts or if we try to wall things off and we kind of close down, then over time we lose that resilience. And it soon starts to manifest in our physical heart as well as our emotional and spiritual heart. And so that's why it is so important for us to tend to our heart as a regular practice. And you know, I'm, I'm very visual and so I get images and when I was thinking of this and I was thinking about, you know, if you have this, this emotion that comes in and it starts to feel uncomfortable and so we kind of wall it off or we dam it off and so you have this little place in our hearts with this little pocket of feeling that hasn't fully processed. And you know, the image that immediately came to mind was a cesspool that was turning like slimy and stinky. I know it's a horrible image, right? I'm like, ew, gross, ew, gross. But if nothing else, it's a great image to motivate me to keep doing my daily practice. It's like, no, I don't want that. Um, but that is what happens if we don't continually tend to our heart and listen to it. In Proverbs 4.23, we hear this great wisdom. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. And I actually found that or hit upon that after I had the cesspool image. So it was very, again, reaffirming. It was just one of those synchronistic kind of things. So to be vigilant with our heart, to listen and tend to it, is a regular daily practice I invite all of us to keep entering into because life has so much that it continually presents to us. And the thing about kind of closing down and not allowing our heart to fully express, to fully feel, to allow everything that comes to us to move through us, to breathe through us, to dance through us, to sing through us, we may not feel the pain as much, but the joy becomes dingier as well. It's not quite as bright. And it's interesting that in almost all traditions, there's some version of the cloudy heart and warning against the cloudy heart or the rusty heart because it's so important to pay attention to. And so almost all spiritual and religious traditions have some way of talking about this, about the importance of keeping a clear heart, of keeping a bright heart. It's like the difference between a dull, discordant noise and a beautiful tone or harmony. And without keeping our resilient heart open and clear, we're unable to stay connected to our passion as well. And I came upon, uh, I didn't know of this person and only recently found out about uh, Edna Lewis. And do other people know of Edna Lewis? Oh, yay! I mean, we all should know of Edna Lewis. But uh, she was a chef in the early, early 20th century. And she was a black woman. And so, in the early 20th century, uh, it was rare for any female chefs, let alone a black woman. And so she was born in Virginia. She later moved to New York. And she brought this loving kind of appreciation for Southern cooking, using fresh ingredients and in what was around her. 
and became a chef and a restaurant owner. And she taught others to cook at a time when it was so rare to see women, let alone people of color, in that role and serving in that way. And she later went on to win uh, numerous different awards for her service in uh, the culinary world. And there was a stamp that was made um, in honoring of her in 2014. And she has a best-selling cookbook that was about the taste of Southern cooking. But you think about the resilience it took for her to stay centered in her core and still go forth to live her passion. And that is only possible when we stay connected to that resilient core within us. So in closing, I just want to kind of guide us through a, a closing meditation. And so I'm just going to invite you, wherever you are, just to, to take a moment. And just feeling your feet on the ground, and if it's comfortable, closing your eyes. And you may even just place a hand on your heart. It just brings more of your focus and attention to that place. And imagine breathing into that space around your heart. And so just asking your own sweetheart what is present in this moment. What, if anything, is it needing right now? And just noticing, not needing to change anything in this moment. And noticing if there's warmth or coolness lightness or heaviness, just being with this beautiful conversation with your own resilient heart. And listening deeply for what it most needs today And if nothing comes, that's fine. But just being open and willing to hear and feel and know what it is calling for and commit to following through on that. We are thankful for this time to simply be. to listen and be fully present. May we remember to return to this place of deep listening. And I invite us to send love and appreciation towards our heart. It is a two-way conversation. Sending love and appreciation for the amazing work it does with every beat. For all that it is able to hold and carry and release. And for the gift of this time being fully present we are so grateful, and so it is. Amen.
You can stand up if you like. No, they can't. Yes, you can. If, if you know this, this is called Chasing After You, which uh, a lot of churches do as like a regular Sunday thing. And if you know it, get into it. Otherwise, uh, you can just move back and forth, and you're always free to do as your body is able. Phineas is an awesome singer and uh, is leading this, and I feel very, very lucky to have him here today with us. Thank you, Diane. Chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more. I'm chasing, chasing after you, no matter what, no matter what I have to do, cause I need, cause I need you more and more. I said more and more. Everybody should be awake now, yeah? yeah. <laughs> so we come to that time now to give of our tithes and our love offering. And so you are, can text to give uh, if you're here in the room or at home. Uh, the number's on the screen, 206-350-8448. 
You can also give via our website. And if you're here in the room, we also still lovingly accept checks and cash. So you have options. So let us now put a blessing on our offering together. I give willingly, joyfully, and lovingly, knowing that God is the constant source of my supply. I give with graciousness and receive with gratitude. We have prayer chaplains here to pray with you if you're here in the room. And so Melissa and David can meet you over there. If you have a prayer request, uh, please don't leave with a heavy heart. And if you'd like to write down a prayer and uh, leave that in the box, you're welcome to do that as well. And so we have a number of names uh, for people that we are going to pray for and just hold in our hearts and hold in prayer. And so again, I just ask us to take a breath and center in our hearts as we know and affirm the highest and the best divine order unfolding in the lives of Linda and Joanna, Miranda and Mike, for Jeff and Drew. We bless Andrea and Glenda, Maria's extended family. We affirm divine order, abundance, and well-being for Ray and the Roberts families, for Scott and Julie, for Stephen and Sandra, and for David, Mike, and Rick. We hold and light and love Brooke, for Heath and Lewis, for B, for Arlene and Charlene, Lauren and Lee. We affirm divine order unfolding in the lives of Karina and Don Sr. and Don Jr. For Michael and Jim, we see each one guided on their right and perfect path, and we know this truth for Sabrina for April and Martha, for Bert and Duncan, for Donna, for Carol and her husband. We bless Stefan, Shirley, Gail, and Jackie. I ask that we hold in light and love the people of Buffalo, just seeing them lovingly supported, uplifted, surrounded we know there is no distance in spirit and so we send these blessings and prayers forth knowing that they are doing their good work wherever they are most needed and if there's someone else you know in need of prayer i invite you to speak their name or hold them in your heart And so let us close together with our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is. And that's the truth. Yes, I invite you to stand as you are able. Hold hands for a minute. There's a thing that's going to get going, and you're probably going to need to clap. But hold hands for a minute. I want to say thank you to all of the people who made this possible this morning. Uh, David and Nick, all of our mag magical ushers, the Metropolis staff. Special thank you to people who I haven't seen in a couple of years. God bless you. It's so good to see your faces. Uh, for Melissa and uh, uh, Chris and Phineas and Jesse, um, Olivia and David, and I'm Aaron and our whole team. Chris is going to sing the intro to this. Go for it. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all myself. I didn't know the grace of God was I didn't know the love of God was there. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> but now I can say if you feel discouraged, 
Struggling just to make it through another day You gotta let it go Let it 